In the last lecture, we had a brief overview about the JSON Web Token and how it works. Now, in this lecture, we are going to use those concepts to sign up a user. So, we have already implemented this sign up functionality earlier. And using the sign up functionality, we are able to create a new user in the database. But after the user is created, we are not doing anything. So, what we want is, once the user is signed up, that means once the user is created, we want to log in the user immediately, making it a more real sign up process. And to do that, what we are going to do is, once the user is created, we are going to create a JSON web token and we are going to send that token back to the client. So, in the last lecture, we learned when the user client receives a JSON web token in the response, that means the user is logged into the application. And we are going to implement the same functionality here for this sign up function. So basically, once the new user is created, we want to log in the user. And to log in the user, we are simply going to send a token back to the user's client. So starting from this lecture, in this section, we are going to completely work on authentication and authorization of a user for our Express app. And to work with authentication and authorization, we are going to make use of JSON web tokens. And to use JSON web tokens, that is to use JWT, we need to install a package. So let's go to another terminal here. And here, let's go ahead and let's install a package. So for that, I'll say npm install. And the package name is JSON web token. Let's press enter. So the package is being installed here. All right, the package has been installed, but just to verify, let's open this package.json file. And here we have our JSON web token package installed with this version. All right, let's close this package.json file here and let's go ahead and let's require this JSON web token package. So here I will create a variable. I will call it JWT and we want to require the JSON web token package here. Now, using this JSON web token package, we want to create a JSON web token, which we want to send back to the client. So here, let me go ahead and let me create a variable. I'll call it token. You can call it anything, but I simply like to call it as token. And now this token is going to be a JSON web token. Now, if you remember, a JSON web token consists of three parts, the header, the payload and the signature. Right. So how are we going to create this token? Well, let's go to the documentation of this JSON web token library. So here we are in the documentation of this JSON web token library in NPM. Let me scroll down. And there we should have a function called sign. Okay, so let's scroll a bit more. And here you can see like this, we can create a JSON web token by using this sign function. So to this sign function, we need to pass two important parameters. The first parameter will be the payload and the second parameter will be the secret string. So we talked about the secret string in our last lecture. We know that the signature of a JSON web token, it consists of header, payload and the secret string. So this will be the payload, the first argument the second argument will be the secret string and header we don't need to specify that will be automatically created and added by this sign function okay so let me go ahead and let me use this sign function so here we can say jwt dot sign and there first we need to pass the payload so that is going to be an object and in this object, we can specify the properties which we want to use as a payload. So, for example, here we want to create a JSON web token for the user. So, here we can use the user object itself or we can use the user email address to create this payload. Or we can also include other properties of the user to create the payload. So, it all depends on you. What do you want to include in the payload? Here, I simply want to include the ID of the user to create this payload. Okay, and keep in mind, the more the properties are there in the payload, the better and the secure the token will be created. Okay, but I just want to keep things simple here. So I will simply include one property 
and to this id property i want to assign the id of the newly created user so for that i will use this new user variable and on that we will have an underscore id field because keep in mind that this new user is basically a document which has been created in the mongodb database and there the id field name is underscore id right so we are going to read that underscore id field value and we are going to assign it to this id variable so this is our payload now we need to specify a secret string and here we can specify any secret string okay and we also need to persist that secret string because it will be used by the application to verify the user okay so instead of using the same string at multiple places what we can do is we can create a string variable in our config file so basically inside this config.env file here i will go ahead and i will create a new secret string environment variable so i'll call it secret str and there i can assign some string value to it and this string value can be any string value but according to the standards of sha 256 encryption for the signature the secret string should be at least of 32 characters long but the longer the string is the better it is but at least it should be of 32 characters okay so this string can be anything it can be an alphanumeric uh, string or anything like that it can also have uh, special characters okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to create an alphanumeric string here something like this it can also have special characters okay and it has total of 34 characters so this secret string is secure enough now here it is not mandatory to use some random string like this your string can be anything okay it can also be some meaningful statement or anything all right so let's save this file and let's also go ahead and let's use this secret string environment variable in our sign up function so let's go back here and here let's go ahead and let's specify that environment variable so for that first we need to access this process object on that we have this inv object and on that we can access this secret str all right so these are the two main arguments for this sign function now we can also specify some options here and the option which i am going to specify here is when should this jwt which we are creating here that should expire okay for that here we can specify a third optional argument which is going to be an object and in there we can specify some options and here i am going to specify the option expires in okay and there we can specify some value for example 90 days something like this or maybe 30 minutes or something like uh, 60 seconds something like this okay but here i want to set the expiration in dates and again instead of specifying it here i will go ahead and i will create that here so i will simply call it as maybe login expires because once the jwt expires that means the user can no longer log in to the application with that same jwt so he will have to log in again a new jwt will be created in that case that will be sent back to the client and then using that new jwt the user can log in again so that's why i'm calling it as login expires and i'm going to set it to maybe 30 days for that i'll simply say 30 d now let's use this environment variable here so here again we will say process dot inv dot the name of the environment variable okay so this simply means that after this time interval the json web token which we are creating here basically this token it will be no longer valid even if it is correctly verified okay so this we are doing basically to log out the user after a certain period of time simply as a security measure so for the 30 days if there is no action from the user in that case we are automatically going to log the user out by expiring this json web token now when we are adding these options here what it will do is it will add it to this payload okay so currently in the payload we are only specifying this id but once this option will be set then those options will be also added to this payload keep in mind that the json web token will be created using 
this payload only where we have only specified the id field and this secret string it will not include the extra payloads which will be added by this expires in option okay so in this way we have created our json web token now we want to send this json web token back to the client and how are we going to do that we are going to send this json web token back to the client using the response so after this status let's go ahead and let's set the token here and since this property name is same as this variable name we don't need to assign it explicitly okay it will be taken care by javascript and this should be it so that's really all we need to do to log in a new user because right now we are not checking if the password is correct or not or if the user actually exists in the database because here we are simply creating a new user and once that new user is created we are simply logging in that user in this case we don't need to check if the user exists because we know the user exists because the user has been created just now and we also don't need to check for his password okay so as soon as the user is created right away we are logging in the user into the application by sending this json web token back to the client and now the user's client should store that token in some way maybe in a cookie or a local storage just like how we learned in the last lecture all right so let's save the changes here and let's try it out using the postman so let's go to postman and here we want to create a new user so for that we are going to make a post request to this url i am going to call this user john let's say the email is john at gmail.com because in order to create a new user the email should be unique and let's say the password is test123 and confirm password is also test1234 all right let's try to create this user so let's click on this send button and here we are getting this error that this expires in should be a number of seconds or string representing a timestamp but here in the config.in file we have specified it as 30d okay so instead of d what it needs is it needs a time in millisecond so here let's specify some time in milliseconds so maybe for example 1 million seconds okay let's save the changes now let's go back to postman and by the way this object which we are trying to create here this would have been created in the mongodb database because this error has come after the user has been created right we are writing this logic basically we are creating this token after the user has been created so if we go to the mongodb database and if i refresh it you will see that that user has been actually created here so i will delete this user for now let's go back to postpin and now let's try to create this user again so when i click on this send button now now you can see that user has been created and here you can see the json web token which has been sent by the server so this is the json web token which will be used as an identity proof when this user will try to access a resource on the server which is restricted to only logged in users okay so this json web token it should be saved by the client somewhere and whenever from that client the user makes a request to the application again this json web token should be sent with that request now let's copy this json web token from here and let's go to jwt.io website so here we are in jwt.io website and in the last lecture i showed you this screenshot in the slides okay so basically this is the json web token and this json web token is encoded and when we decode it it will have three parts header payload and signature now we have copied our own json web token so let me remove it from here and let's paste our json web token and immediately you will see that here we are getting this error invalid signature now why the signature is invalid here you see this json web token has a header where we have the type and the algorithm used it also have a payload and a signature but the signature here is not correct because if you remember when this json web token was created in the payload it only had this id okay but if i go back to browser 
here you will see in this payload we also have these two properties okay and that's why the signature is different because if you remember the signature of the jwt it is created using the header and the payload so since the payload is different here than what we had added so earlier we only added id but after the signature is created using this payload this secret string and then the header which will be automatically added by this sign function after that when we have specified this expires in option to this payload two more properties are getting added for this expires in and those two properties are issued at and expires at and that's why we have this invalid signature but if we go ahead and if we remove these two properties and if we only keep id there let's remove this comma also and now you will see signature is verified okay so here we have logged the user in once the user is signed up but what about the users who are already signed up to our application and want to log in to the application for that we need to implement a login functionality and that's what we are going to do in the next lecture so this is all from this lecture if you have any questions then feel free to ask it thank you for listening and have a great day